Andy Stevenson for a severe MMA standing alongside potentially the new Cage Warriors welterweight champion, James Jimbo Slice Sheen. Did I say standing? I meant yeah. sitting. I, meant I was sitting. I was gonna correct him, but I was like, why would I correct him? Let's just leave it. People aren't gonna care that he said Well, standing. I care, I care. <laughs> I appreciate that. How are you? We're five days out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It it creeps up quickly. It's it's actually wild how like when the fight like the fight got announced, I don't know how many weeks ago, but it just it just flies in because you're so you're so in the mind of day to day training and then just uh, well, I, I find it f- flies in that I'm so focused on singular training sessions and get, getting the most out of it that like they just fly by and now now I'm here and now I'm like, Jesus, five days, like wow. Yeah. yeah. Obviously coming off the win against Ali Santaladi, um when we spoke after the fight, yeah, all of the we were like is it a title shot next? And is it going to be a rematch against Omiel Brown? And since then, a lot of things have changed. Yeah, yeah. Omiel obviously ended up losing that fight to, to Giannis Bakar, who became the champion. Yeah. Bakar is now in the tough house and the, the title is, is vacant. Um, were you confident when all that was going on that you were going to get the title shot? Um, I definitely... I did think I was going to get the title shot because I did feel like Omiel... Well, I, I thought Emil was going to beat uh, Bakar, and I felt like that would have been a great story for Cage Warriors to be able to spin. So, like, I did feel like it was going to happen at some point. And then, obviously, couldn't uh, didn't foresee um, Bakar finishing Brown and then Bakar uh, being snatched up with the, the ultimate fighter straight away. Normally, it's like, normally they have, like, one title defence and then they're snatched up, but, like, it's obviously jumped at the opportunity when it came to him so um yeah look I, I I'm, I'm happy that I'm getting the title shot I just didn't foresee it yeah mm. when did you find out um it wasn't too long ago I kind of they kind of hinted it at me but hadn't gi- given kind of an opponent or anything but the I knew I had to stay ready anyway mm. and um I think once the fight got announced um, that was possibly maybe three weeks ago. Maybe I found out the week before. So, uh, but I, I put in a full camp. Like I, I, I knew that a, if it was going to be a title fight, they would get me an opponent. Like Cage Warriors always do, get you matched, and um, I knew that I was going to be on the Dublin card anyway. So. So you were preparing for five. Yeah, I, I, I was preparing for five fives for Dublin. Yeah. So like, and worst case scenario, it's it's just it's not it's three fives. Yeah, but it'll definitely be the April sixth card anyway. So this was better to over prepare than to yeah, under prepare. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I was a little bit surprised by the matchup itself in Daniel Conrad. I thought that when it was a vacant title, they might have gone with. And I know, uh, I imagine that you know scheduling and things like that were probably already in train. But the likes of a Figlack or a Justin Berlinson yeah. or a Stefano Paterno maybe might have been the opponent. You know, two guys who have kind of already plied their trade in. Cage Warriors, were you surprised by the opponent? Or? Yeah, I thought I, I genuinely thought it was going to be either um, Brown or Fig Lack or one of the like, kind of like regulars, like kind of someone like myself that has, has been under the banner for a while. So um, I was surprised when they when they came in with um, with Conrad, but like at the end of the day, it it doesn't matter. I'm just happy to get the the title shot, and I think I think as well. Um, when they first said it to me, I don't think uh, it was confirmed about Bakar yet. So initially, mm-hmm. I thought it was going to be Bakar, and then when it wasn't, I thought it was going to be like whatever Figlack or one of the other guys in the division. Um, but then I started to see that they were getting matched on other cards. Um, with Cage Wars, and I was like, okay, so it's not him. So I kind of thought, I was like, oh, it must be Bakar then. Because like whatever Petersali was matched and Figlek was matched and Brown was matched, so I was like, okay, and I haven't heard much from Burlington or um, anyone else. So I I just thought it was gonna be um, I just thought it was gonna be Bakar, but then then it was changed. So yeah, yeah. I mean that it's a vote of confidence in my in my books anyway. Like that you are the guy that they want, or that yeah. they be, not that they want that they believe should be in the spot. Yeah, uh, and has earned their spot of, of fighting for that belt. Yeah, definitely. Like I've, I've definitely put in the 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 work in cage wires. Like I, I've never turned down a fight. I've accepted everyone they've they've given me and haven't stayed steered away from anyone. 
Um, so yeah, I feel like I, I've gone the long the long route, but it's led me to the title shot eventually. And I I, I knew I I remember we me and you had an interview before, and you you were kind of asked me like, do you think the title shot is there? And it's like. The, the title is great and everything, but like I just know it's it's just another stepping stone for me and like I I'm just constantly looking to get better and better each time and step up in competition and I felt like it was it was inevitable. I, and that's why I didn't stress about when it would actually be. I just knew that it was inevitable and it would happen at some stage and now that stage is now. So Yeah, I mean you've never really been a guy who's like like, you know, when it comes to the locations you don't really care. Mm. The opponents not that big of a deal to you either. It's yeah. I think would I be right in saying that the title shot itself is that an afterthought? Or like do you let do you allow yourself to think about, you know, I'm finally at this position in my career where I am fighting for a Cage Wars title, which is a big deal. It, it is a big deal, but the, the the same thing, I would be lying if I was saying I was thinking about the the actual title itself and its ramifications. I I I'm I'm more thinking of just like it's it's another fight and really it's a five round fight, mm. and that's what's really sticking in my head, like not the opponent or anything. It's just this is a fight. This is another fight. Like it, I really do believe like every every fight is your biggest fight because like if I didn't win the one before that, I wouldn't be in this situation and so on and so forth, and that's that's literally it. Like like. I always say it as well, I never think about like it being in my hometown until after the fight and I, I feel it's going to be the exact same thing. I, I'll never really think about the, the title until they're actually wrapping it around my waist yeah. after the fight. So um, the one thing that has stuck in my head is that I have an opponent and it's a five round fight this time. Yeah, that's it. Any uh, Uno Master Bambino sponsorship deals for this title fight? Oh, no, <laughs> I was only I was only in town the other no, uh, the other day, and I I actually walked by Uno Master. I was like, man, I actually must go in here just for the crack. <laughs> look, Bambino's uh, actually good. I had I've had Bambino before. I've had a slice. It's decent. I think I, think I had a slice in Bambino. Um, it's got that kind of New York like but it, pizza, but pizza by the slice. But, but uh, it, it definitely has a, an arrogance about it. The, yeah. the 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 there's a certain the type South of South person. Is there's, it? A, there's a certain a certain type of person that goes there that kind of annoys me, but I I think Dave Fontaine's is better. Oh wow, well, controversial. Yeah, well, yeah. You're back in Ball's Bridge, so you were you know licking the arses of every Leinster rugby player the last time we spoke. Um, did any of them reciprocate? Out of this one. My uncle is actually big uh, rugby fans as well, so like I don't, I don't think they were too impressed by uh, by my uh, words of uh, rugby fans anyway. Yeah, um, it's a big night for the gym. The last time, if I think I'm correct in saying this, that we had a team <coughs> rhino fighter fighting for the cage warriors belt was when Neil Siri beat Mikael Silander back yeah. in 2013. Yeah, big yeah. night for the gym. Yeah, it is. Yeah, like not not even just a big night for like me in terms of the title but I feel like this is like me and Andy were kind of talking there recently that like this is kind of like the next wave of lads like establishing establish on themselves in cage warriors like Solomon is a few wins away from the title itself and then Jer is just in got a great win there and now Jamie's in and he's going to just follow Jer up that ladder and hopefully the same thing Jer wins the belt and then Jamie's there to snatch it up and even the it's the same with Derby that like once I win the belt, then he'll be the next in line for it. So it's an exciting time for the gym, definitely. And Jamie definitely. up a business as well, making his pro debut, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Do you see yourself as the captain of the team now? Obviously, Red is uh, is <laughs> Andy Ryan is throwing his eyes up to heaven here. Uh, <laughs> Red is obviously te- I feel like Red is teasing to come back a few times now, but uh, no, are, I still, are you the captain? I, no, I still still think Red is the captain. He's just such a big personality. Uh, I uh, I'm more quiet, so uh, maybe maybe I'll lead by example in the cage. But Reds is still team captain. He's after giving a thumbs up and pointing at you there, but uh, I don't know if you saw that. I don't, I don't know. Why. You you don't like it's very you don't like giving each other any sort of compliments. But like Andy will like be like, don't tell James, but he's the captain. Nah, nah, I don't know. I don't know. Look, Andy's the boss anyway, so whatever he says goes. So. Yeah. How are the rest of the lads looking uh, ahead of there? Obviously, we've got Jared. Solomon and and Jamie. Uh, and Jamie, everyone's everyone's sharp. Everyone's put in the work, so 
now it's the time to go out and show and like like we have on uh previous cards that like we're we're at that level and we're 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 shown that we're we're one of the best gyms in Ireland and what better way to have guys on the best promotion in Europe climbing the ladder and getting to that belt then in each respective uh, division. Yeah, Daniel Conrad, um, I watched a bit of his fights in Cage Fight Series. I know he's not well known, but he is a very dangerous opponent. I think he's yeah. got a, a serious amount of power in his hands. Um, mm. What are you expecting coming in? I think he, I would be right in saying you're the most experienced, like you face more experienced fighters and mm. you have a lot more experience under your belt, uh, but he is quite dangerous still. Yeah, he's, he's definitely dangerous. Like, look, no matter who I was going to be fighting, you're fighting for a Cage Wars belt. They're, they're not going to get anyone. They're going to get people who are good. And Daniel's definitely good. Like, he's dangerous on the feet. He's dangerous on the ground. But like that, every fighter has their, their pros and cons. And one, one thing that I will say is he hasn't fought the competition that I've fought. And that's the one thing in Cage Wars that I've fought that level competition, being, being tested. And everyone can look good on other shows and stuff like this but like we will see like I'm definitely his, his toughest opponent to date is he my toughest opponent to date no mm. so I think I think that's a big difference and as well uh, my my skill set I feel like I'm comfortable everywhere in that fight so yeah I'm looking forward to it what do you feel you need to, you need to do to negate his danger it's not even that I need to negate his danger. It's just if I just fight my fight, I just feel naturally I'll just start to take over. Um, everyone, everyone's dangerous everywhere in a fight. Like you can say people are dangerous on the feet because they have knockouts or subs on the ground, but I have knockouts and I have subs. So he could be doing the exact same thing to me that, oh, I need to take it down because he has a knockout. I, I need to keep it standing because he has subs. Like at the end of the day, I have a certain group of uh, skills that I'm looking to impose on him and he's looking to do the same and that's it at the end of the day. Yeah, how good would it feel to, to get the hand raised and get that belt wrapped around your waist? Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> it'd be, it'd be, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be great, like it's just it's just another fight for me and if there's one thing I'm good at is it's, it's fighting so all I have to do is go in and do what I do in the gym every day and at the end of the day, I'll think about it after the the significance of it of a of a belt or whatever. At the moment, all I'm thinking about is the opponent and the fight. Yeah, and I know, and I know, like obviously, we're five days out from a fight. It, it's laser focus. But say generally in your career, would you have been thinking, you know, someday I want that cage warriors belt? Yeah, I I think so because I think it's just a natural progression of it. Like you're constantly looking to like. Like I said, I always think one fight ahead. I don't have mm. major long-term visions or anything. But if you do take a step back and look at that objectively, you are seeing that, like, okay, if I keep on winning, I will eventually end up at the belt. So now, once I'm at the belt, now I'll probably have to reassess mm. and then see, like, okay, now where am I kind of going? But, like, that's it. I definitely have the belt it, like with everything. Like, I... When I first started in amateur days, I just wanted to fight amateur and then like kind of got around to a belt and then that's the same and then kind of thought about going pro. It, ju it just naturally goes that way and I feel the belt has felt the exact same way to me. It's I've always felt like it's you've taken a, like a sensible kind of reserved approach when it comes to that. Like you're very logical when it comes to, you know, not getting too carried away. Um, I can't help but kind of think of Reese obviously fought there in the UFC last weekend and has unfortunately dropped to 0-4 in the promotion. Mm -hmm. You know, he's a guy who had a brilliant run in Cage Wars, got to the UFC, came up against really difficult competition and wasn't able to get the win, went back, you know, back to Cage Wars, refined himself and went back again. And it's just unfortunately he hasn't been able to, to turn that into a win. Mm. When you think about your own career, Obviously, the, the Cage Warriors belt is it's a validation uh, in sort, but it's also a bit of a bargaining chip to, to now say, right, now I'm validated to go off to the UFC. Yeah. Would you hesitate to just jump at the chance uh, or, or how would you approach a, a decision like that? Um, I'm not too sure because you'd, you'd have to look at what they're offering you first. Um, like even 
every lad is offered a different uh, opportunity in the UFC, whether it could be like the Contender Series or the Ultimate Fighter, or it could be like like Reds was offered uh, fights at a different weight class. You have to weigh up the risk to reward, and I think y you have to be given the opportunity to first manage the risk to reward. Of course, you're gonna try and go in there and go like ha have the reward side on your in your favor, I suppose, and like uh, like Reese Reese did get a a rough enough deal there that like his his UFC debut was against Kamsa Chmoyev. Yeah, and at it's the end, it's a nightmare. Uh, yeah, it's a nightmare. Like uh, at the end of the day, the UFC is a business. They're they're not your friends. They don't give a fuck whether you st stepped up on seven days' notice to help fill a card. At the end of the day, they understand that, like, look, if if you didn't win, kid, that's it. And, like, they might give you one more. And if you get unfortunate there, this I, I didn't actually watch this Morona fight, but I don't know how he got on. But um, that that's it. It's a, it's, a, it's a rough deal and, like... They don't give a fuck about your feelings, so you have to, you have to kind of look after yourself, and that's where like, I trust the 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 expertise of of Andy and like the other coaches as well to see like okay, this is the right opportunity. We should go for this or not go for this. Or. Yeah, obviously you mentioned Neil Siri earlier on. Did mm. he give you any advice uh, as a man who's held a title in Cage Warriors before? <laughs> no, he hasn't, he hasn't, yeah. I think he's just leaving me to my own device and just go around and do what I do best. Yeah. yeah. Well, look, uh, how do you, the last one, how do you see it playing out? Uh, I think a five-round fight suits me better than it suits him. And I think the longer the fight goes on, the, uh, the better it goes, basically. Yeah, well, look, I'm very excited. Uh, hoping the next time we speak to you, we'll be chatting to Cage Warriors champion um, James Sheen. Appreciate the time, especially so close to the fight. Yeah, thanks, and uh, <laughs> I'll give you your passport to the Southside soon enough. Yeah, lovely. <laughs> <laughs>